Hi guys, OV Day Reacts here and I'm Ash. We've just uh, reacted to the Dave Clark 5. Yeah, it was good fun. And now you're watching the Dave Clark 1. T Plus. It can't be the Dave Clark 2. No, because that'd be weird. No, because we smashed the patriarchy, didn't we? Yeah, so 100%. it'd be uh, some sort of double barrel. Independent, sexy Ash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, right then, Bill Burr. Ugh. Actually, you say that, but what did we do where you actually got to see the human side of him a little bit more? All right, the podcast. Uh, I did. I did start to enjoy him. I will admit, he's actually a sound guy, but I don't like his stage persona. I, do, I just don't. Yeah, I don't. He's he's obviously a really top, intelligent, fantastic guy who has an awesome family and an awesome life, but. Yeah. It's his stage persona. I just... It just upsets you a little bit with his... Uh... No, it's the way he sounds. Because like I said, it's not even like if another comedian <clears throat> did his kind of jokes, I think I'd be pissing myself. Yeah. It's just the way he executes it. I don't know what it is. It's just, you know, when you meet someone and they could be the nicest person on the planet. And a lot of people have said this about me, by the way. But they're annoying as hell. You just don't know what it is. You're like, it's like nails on a chalkboard. It's just like, why are you irritating me? And I, you're such a nice person, but I can't understand why you irritate me. It's from Boston. But the number of people that have said that about me. That anyway. you're from Boston. No, that I'm annoying as hell. You're the only one. You can be, me. but I've, I'm getting good at zoning out. And there he is. I see the little glaze comes over. Yeah, but there, I get upset when you zone out on me. I know. Uh, I know. I called you out <laughs> on it the other day, didn't I? <laughs> Everything I've got to say is really important. And anyone that's watched me for the past four years is going to know that it's imperative that people listen to the words I've got to say. It's life-changing sort of stuff. <laughs> Dumbleweed blowing through town. Bill Burr. Okay. Black Friends, Clothes, and Harlem. Okay. Is Harlem a place? Because I know Harlem. there's a place in um, Amsterdam called Harlem. That's, I think that might be New Harlem. Is I think it, it might Amsterdam? be New Harlem. Uh, Harlem is a borough, I think it's called a borough of New York. Okay. And I think Harlem was in the sort of. 70s, 80s, that sort of time. I think it was a predominantly black part of New York. Okay. So have you seen the movie American Gangster? Probably. Where it's like the uh, heroin trade and it's like a, a, a sort of black mafia style movie. It's an absolute classic. It's such a great movie. I'm pretty sure that's based in Harlem for, for a time. It's, it's not the one with Robert De Niro, is it? No. No, I don't no, think no. I'll show it you at yeah. some point. It's yeah, an absolute yeah, yeah. classic. But anyway, yeah. Let's check it out. Bill Burr, Black Friends, Clothes and Harlem. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I got a couple of uh, friends of uh, African persuasion. And uh, I got to get rid of them, man. I got to admit to you. I'm fine. I'm spending too much money on clothes hanging out with them. Because I got to, like, fucking try to keep up with their wardrobe. It's like every time they go out, they got all brand new shit on. All brand new shit. So when I show up with my white version of brand new, which is, you know, I basically, I ironed the shit, right? I ironed it, right? It's new. They just start trashing me. I can't keep up with them, man. They got like fucking 58 pairs of sneakers. You ever notice that shit? Like every color fucking Timberland. And I don't give a shit what fucked up color their shirt is. They got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat. It's like a rule or something. They're the worst. Even when you wear some new shit, there's like some sort of rule that you gotta like space out the amount of time with, within which like that you wear it. Cause God forbid you wear the same shirt within a 10 day period, one of them's gonna notice. All of a sudden just look at you funny like, this motherfucker's got the same shit he had on last Tuesday. And then the whole car's like, oh shit. Then everybody just starts making fun of your fucking clothes. First they do the math, like, what was that, five days ago? Five days, this motherfucker got five shirts. <laughs> he got five shirts. And they start breaking it down. Yo, his first shirt be saying Monday. Next shit be saying Tuesday. Yo, on the weekend, he ain't be wearing no shirts. I'll tell you, that's actually funny. You know what? That's actually how, uh, how I judge black guys now. When I first came to the city, like, all black people scared me. 
No, I was like the typical white dude from like the suburbs, you know what I mean? I had no frame of reference, you know? So my only frame of reference with black people was like, those, remember those early 90s gangster rap videos? <laughs> Throw the fucking LA riots in there, man. It was fucking horrible PR. <laughs> I'm watching the videos, look, he's got a nice car, he's got all the women, and he's still fucking mad. <laughs> These black dudes are never happy. <laughs> But after 10 years of living in the city, this is how I narrow it down. Whether well, black dude scares me or not. Black dudes with dirty sneakers scare the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> no. I figured out in my head, because I know from hanging out with them, that's the last shit that they're going to let go, the immediate shit that they have on. So I think, you know, if his sneakers are fucked up, that means his life is fucked up. <laughs> Every time he leaves his building, the whole neighborhood, oh, shit! <laughs> Everyone starts making fun of him. He's on the train in a bad mood. I kind of have this howdy doody, kind of mug me kind of face. <laughs> I'm not saying something's gonna happen. I'm just saying, I'm paying attention. <laughs> so I've been I do like the howdy doody <laughs> mug me <laughs> <Yeah>. face. <laughs> That's one thing he's great at is ripping himself in these things. Oh like, yeah. He'll, he'll always bring it back to himself. He's telling a... a a careful line here, isn't I it? don't think he is. I think he's being honest and I actually quite appreciate it because he's just saying, hey, yeah, I didn't have any point of reference. It's bad PR. It's like I said to you, like how the only reference I had of the British was EastEnders. And a lot of you don't know it, but it is a, a, it. it's a soap over here. It's a terrible soap. And it's opera. horrendous. Everyone tries to kill each other. It's mean. And I was like, I don't want to move to England. Actually, you're all really nice. But this is what I mean. So what I get what he's, yeah, yeah. I get what he's saying. And he does it so beautifully. And he's like, he's trying to make reference. It's like, like you said, like, I know the type of British that you stay away from. The ones yeah. that have their tracksuits tucked into their socks. Their so, hands in their pants and walking around, yeah. <laughs> so you grew up around predominantly black people. Yes. And you were a minority. Yes. Was the fashion sort of thing the same in Zimbabwe where, like, the black people you grew up around were more fashion conscious or, or was it not like that there? It wasn't really. They, I don't think there was ever really. A, but the, obviously, the the generation I grew up in, it wasn't really fashion orientated. Yeah, it's not like people have got like Air Force Ones on and no, and like that. a lot of it was about comfort. It was a hot place, so and it was a dusty place, like a lot of the red clay. You did get the African businessmen who I absolutely loved because it was all about the very fancy suits and they had to have the most brightly coloured socks and the most tanned, shiny, polished. Mm. Pointy uh, boots yeah. on, and that I appreciate. I see there was like the that. pinstripe and the uh, yeah. cans sometimes and stuff. But like a lot of the uh, Zimbabwean women were dressed in skirts that were very, again, very brightly coloured. Like we called them sarongs, you know, so you wrap around yeah, a couple yeah. of times. And then we had what was called a duck, which was obviously to stop um, it, your hair getting out of control. Right. Um, and then just a loose shirt. I mean, it, yeah, I don't remember much of a fashion back home other than like the phase of like the wags, you know, the, the posh white women who used to wear like the shoulder pad, like matching suits and things when they were trying to be that was a thing wannabe well. things. Yeah. But I hated that fashion. I think I was going to have a whale once. <laughs> Shoulder pads were everywhere in the 80s. Like, awful. white people and shoulder pads were just... It's that awful, was it. Awful fashion sense. It happened, I'm just saying. I'm paying attention. <laughs> so I've been seeing this girl recently. Uh, this black girl, right? She lives up in Harlem, you know? Gone out, like, three, four times, you know? First time we hung out, we hung out in, like, the village area in New York, you know, which is sort of like a racially mixed area. <laughs> so shit was cool, you know what I mean? Second time we hung out was more like Midtown, you know? Then the third time, she called me at like 3.30 in the morning and she wanted me to come up to her apartment, right? So it's 3.30 in the morning, she lives in Harlem, I look how I look, so it's a fucking situation. <laughs> yeah, cause you know the deal, right? Basically a white dude feels comfortable up to about like 98th, 99th street, you know what I'm saying? The second the streets start getting into like triple digits, like 100, 101st street, start getting like a little asthma, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, it's starting to get a little high up here. <laughs> You feel that little tightness in your chest? Can you feel that? 106th Street, you're like leaning on shit. Like, dude, where'd all the cabs go? How come there's no taxis up here? Dude, what's a bodega? I don't know what that is. Let's get, let's get the fuck out of here. So I'm praying to God she's going to tell me 
to take the subway, get off at like 105th Street, 103rd, you know, which is like the first stop in Harlem where I can still look over my shoulder and see like all the white people like disappearing over the horizon, you know? But she goes, no, man, you want to get on the Uptown 2-3 train, you want to get off at 125th Street. I'm like, God, fuck, 125th Street. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's like right in the middle of everything. I'm going to be surrounded on all four sides. I can't fucking do this. <laughs> So, at this point, I'm really trying to hide like the bitchy tone that's starting to creep into my voice, you know? And I'm trying to ask for really specific directions for when I get up there, because I want to know exactly where I'm going. So she starts naming the streets I have to go down, and every other street up there is named after like a black leader, you know? She's like, make a left on Adam Clayton, take a right on Frederick Douglass. I'm like, ah, fuck Adam Clayton. <laughs> Yo, dude, go on the internet and look up Adam Clayton. Did he kill a bunch of white people during the slave revolt? Dude, I ain't going up there till I know what Adam Clayton did. Fuck this shit. <laughs> so at this point, I'm really having a battle with myself. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? I'm like, I can't do this, but my dick's going, no, come on, man, we can do this, all right? <laughs> Just relax. Pull yourself together and get on the goddamn train, right? So as always, I listen to my dick. <laughs> oh yeah, I get on the train. By the time I get up there, it's like five or four in the morning, right? I'm staying on like Malcolm X and like Danny Glover or some shit, right? <laughs> I don't even know where the hell I'm at. But I see the street I want to go up. I want to go up St. Nick. I can literally see her apartment building. But there's like five or six black dudes standing right on the corner, right where I want to walk by. So I'm like, fuck! <laughs> I thought I was on like some reality show at that point, like some sort of like white guy survivor. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I gotta walk right by these guys, right? You know what's funny? I think that they were actually more surprised to see me than I was scared, you know? <laughs> and I was really, really scared, you know? But I'm also really, really white, you know? <laughs> like shockingly Caucasian. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you're not ready for me, I can like surprise you. No, especially if you live up there. You've probably seen a white person for hours, possibly days. So when I show up, it's almost like magical. Like a leprechaun came out of nowhere, you know? <laughs> Felt like I should have had like a little pot of gold, like a rainbow behind me. Top of the morning to you, like it. <laughs> kind of danced my way past them. But it's been going all right, you know? Once I get in her apartment, I'm fine, you know? I relax. Sit down, you know, watch a hip-hop countdown. <laughs> Pretend like I know the groups, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just getting there that's a fucking pain in the ass. But, you know, I don't get mad at it, because I figure, you know, black dudes got to go through the same shit, though, right? When you go out to the suburbs, go fuck a white girl, right? <laughs> just that same awful feeling of just leaving your people behind, you know, just less and less of you as you're fucking driving out there. Probably start off lean and you're all fucking cool. 20 minutes in, you're driving like 10 and 2. The radio's off. Like, dude, I don't like this shit. I don't like this shit at all. There's too much grass. I don't see any rims. This is fucked up. None of the windows are tinted. I can clearly see white people in every car. This is fucked up. Listen, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. God bless you. Thank you very much. All right, man. Take care. I actually enjoyed that one of his. That was good. Yeah. I think he was more the butt of the joke in that one. Yeah. And then he kind of... But he also makes it relatable with, like, he's like, yeah, but you guys obviously experience the exact same yeah. thing. If you're going to go into a white girl suburb, like... <laughs> There's some of the things he said, you'd get, like, kind of young, wokey started types nowadays mm. are just like, why would you feel uncomfortable in a black area, you know, and things like that. And that's what I meant when I said he's kind of towing the line a little bit because he's doing it perfectly... Because he's yeah. saying things that sound... We're, we're not from... We're from his generation, so we understand it more. Yeah, well, we also enjoy comedy and aren't yeah. fucking stuck up our own asses. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. But also, anything goes. We've had this discussion on this channel, and yes, like I said, there's been the odd time I've been offended, but I can still appreciate that it's a joke, yeah. that it's not meant to offend me. I just... I'm allowed to feel my shit. You can feel however you want to feel, but yeah. some of the funniest things are... Offensive. My sense of humour is offensive. I absolutely love Bill Burr. He's probably my favourite comic. Yeah. Bless you. <laughs> Bless you. Right. I hope you guys enjoyed that too. Not the sneeze, the reaction. 
Um, if you enjoyed the sneeze as well, then uh, sign up to Patreon and you can request as many sneezes as you like. And some ASMR sneezes. And we'll just sneeze down a microphone for money. Ew, I am. I'm not above that. Ew. Not got a job anymore, so... <laughs> 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 I, I do don't get me involved in this cheers for that one guys we'll see you soon bye guys <laughs>